Folks, this video is going to tell you how to test a uh, transistor using nothing more than a multimeter. It's a little aside from my uh, Techniques SU87 repair video. Normally I would test a transistor with a fancy instrument like this, the Atlas DCA Pro Semiconductor Analyzer. But what if you don't have one of those? I mean, they are 200 bucks. What if all you've got is a cheap little multimeter? This uh, is not a fancy multimeter. It's certainly no fluke or no agilent. It's a uh, Radio Shack meter I bought 10 years ago for 30 bucks. Fortunately, for just a quick and dirty check of transistor operation, you don't need a fancy multimeter. You need a cheap, just any cheap multimeter with a diode check function. You can technically use a resistance function as well, but I like using the diode check method. I think it works a little better. Okay, some limitations of this check, test. You can't tell whether a transistor is noisy, nor can you tell whether it is leaky. You can also not test certain types of transistors. Testing MOSFETs is a little difficult, not as scope of this video. You have to trigger the gate yourself. But uh, among other things you can't test, certain RF transistors are not testable this way. You cannot test transistors with built-in emitter resistances, and you cannot test transistors with, with built-in biasing resistances. These transistors don't have any of that. In fact, most transistors don't have any of that. And if you've got a receiver or amp that's blowing its mains fuse, you're looking for a dead short. And for this, and in this case, a dead short is the simplest thing to find, and all you need is a cheap multimeter. <laughs> You can think of a transistor as two diodes wired back to back with the common terminal being the base. So we will have a diode junction between collector and base and emitter and base. You will have an open circuit between collector and emitter at all times on a good transistor. Let's run some tests. On Unfortunately on a TO3 we know one lead automatically. We know the collector. So I'm going to attach the positive to the collector. And we're going to see if we get a diode junction between collector and base. You'll note that it still says open circuit. That's not necessarily a bad transistor yet though. Because diodes only conduct in one way, we have to check with the leads the other way around. So we'll now attach the negative to the collector and the positive to the base. And I've got a diode drop you know, from about a half a volt to one volt. It'll generally be around a half a volt on most transistors. If the base is positive and the other terminal is negative, when you have current flowing, then you know you have an NPN transistor. If the collector or the emitter were positive and the base negative, you knew you would have a you knew you had a P and P transistor. That's the only difference between the two is the polarity. So let's see if we have a uh, diode junction between base and emitter. Again, we do. We want to test it in the other direction to make sure we don't have anything when we reverse bias it. And indeed, we don't. We also want to check for a collector to emitter shorts. So Attach from collector to emitter, open circuit, go the other way around just to make sure, and again, open circuit. That tells us we most likely have a good NPN transistor. Now let's go over to our DCA Pro, just for giggles, connect it up. The nice thing about this, this thing, besides the fact that it can test for leakage, and it can tell you the gain, and all this other stuff, that was my multimeter turning off, is it can tell you uh, PNP, NPN, N-channel, P-channel, or whatever type of transistor you're doing, whether it's bipolar or FETs. It also determines the leads automatically. This is a slick piece of equipment. Watch this. And it tells me it is indeed an NPN silicon bipolar junction transistor. It tells me which uh, color leads are what. Red is the base, green is the emitter, blue is the collector, HFE, or gain is 40 at 
this temperature at that current. Our VBE drop is shown at that current and our leakage current. This can actually also draw curves at various different uh, currents using the USB function in their little computer program. I'll shut it down. But yeah, that's that's what you get in the fancier instruments. But to just tell if it's shorted or not, that's a nice instrument, and I usually use it, but because it saves me a little bit of time. But you don't need anything that fancy if you're just try doing a DIY. Okay, let's turn our multimeter back on. Throw it in a diode check. Let's test another transistor. How about this one? Let's attach a lead and another lead. Open circuit. And we're testing it the other way around. Also open circuit. Um, with a good transistor, we knew we would know that that was one of those leads was our emitter. Let's test for the base. Get on there. Got a diode drop. The base negative, collector positive. Let's check for base to emitter. I also have a diode drop. Note in this case that the base is negative is the uh, way it wants to be hooked up to get current flowing. Indeed, if I connect it the other way around, I will get no current and no voltage drop. This tells me that this is a PNP transistor. Let's make sure that the, uh, again, open circuit from collector to emitter. Oops, I accidentally touched my leads together. That was Again, still getting open circuit from collector to emitter. This is a good PNP transistor. And indeed, it does seem to be the case. It's a 2SB539C. Let's test this one. Actually, how about this one? I'll attach a lead here and here. Uh-oh. That's not good. That's not a typical diode drop. That's a short circuit. Let's see if it's the same in the other way. I'm almost certain it will be. I think this transistor is toast. Oh yes, very toasty. What about the uh, base to emitter? And the other way around, let's check. About the same. That's not good. Base to emitter should connect. Should uh, when you connect the uh, base to emitter, you should get a diode drop only in one direction, not both. Let's check collector to base. And the other way around. Again, collector to base, you should see a, a diode drop only in one direction. This transistor is faulty. This one's short-circuited. You can see, marked it as bad. What about this one? Collect, connect a lead. We're going to connect a positive to the collector and negative to another lead. Open circuit. Let's go the other way around. Since we got nothing in either direction, we know that we've connected uh, between collector and emitter, and that this transistor might be good. Let's try from collector to base. Get a diode drop. Let's try it the other way around. We should get open circuit if it's any good. Indeed, I get an open circuit connected that way. Since the base haven't had to be positive to get a 
voltage drop. You can see I've got the base positive and the collector is negative, and now I've got a voltage drop. We know that this is an NPN transistor. One last check base to emitter. Got a voltage drop. Should not get a voltage drop any other way. And indeed, it's a good NPN transistor. 2SD287C. How about this one? Well, I think we can probably guess. We'll connect our leads up. Got a vo Yeah, hold on. Got a diode drop. What about in the other way? Should get uh, nothing in the other direction if it's good. Uh, it's different at least. That's, that's This is not a good sign, but as long as it's different significantly, it might not be bad. Further testing is required. Test the other lead. Ooh. Yeah, if you see a voltage drop that low, again, it's shorted. You know. And we'll try it in the other direction, just for giggles. Shorted. So, that was our... Uh, Base to collector is conductive in both directions, which is not good. And our collector to emitter is a dead short. This transistor's bad. For giggles, though, let's try the uh, base emitter. Again, pretty leaky from base to emitter and shorted from collector to emitter. This transistor is also faulty. You can see I've marked it as bad. And that is why the Techniques SU8077 did this to its fuse. It didn't just melt the fuse, it vaporized it. You can see the black and silver specks on the uh, glass there. So much current flowed that it literally boiled metal. Fortunately for this amplifier, it was well designed. It had enough current capability in the rest of its circuits to merely blow the fuse and not do any other external damage. In fact, uh, I had a double short in the output with both the positive and negative side of the amplifier the PNP and the NPN on one of the channels shorted out, which shorted both power supplies to each other. The resultant large current flow did not burn any other components, and there was no smoke at all. This is a very well-designed piece of equipment, and it will live to see another day. And I'm about to cover its repair.